so essentially this round was developed um, as a response to the Spanish-American War in the Philippines, and it's got more stopping power. But it really came in handy by World War One. The there were several years of trials with the 1911 uh, service pistol or this type. You know, they had the Colt 1909. They had various prototypes that led up to the final 1911. Dirt, you know, that we see today. This is just a derivative of that classic pattern. It's got damned extra safety. It's got things that the original, the original service guns didn't have. But the 45 ACP was particularly helpful in the trenches of World War One. It was designed to it was designed to be a one shot, one kill sort of pistol. It was just up close and personal. Just boom, you know, it did the job. There was no ifs, ands, or buts. That's why it's such a popular classic American defense pistol, you know. But this gun also, on you know, a lot of people would say, well, you know, handguns are specifically for one thing and one thing only, which is true. And 98% of your uses for a handgun are going to be specifically purely self-defense. It's a close-range weapon. The most you'd be able to get out of this gun, if you're lucky, is 25 to 50 yards. Not very far. Not like this AK over here, which you can hunt with. If you have a five-round magazine, you can hunt with an AK legally in the state of Oregon. In some states, I imagine you can hunt with that 30-round magazine. But even this gun up close, if you were lucky and you were able to time your shot right, you'd be able to kill varmints. But the point is, regardless of this long, intricate back history on this particular pistol I'm holding in front of me, is it's a tool that can be used to preserve life, to take life or to feed your family. You know, it's a tool. It's the modern day equivalent of a sword. And any of these guns that I have, I would never want to use on any man. And I hope that I never have to. But they're there for a reason. You know, and then the third is the Rock Island Armory 12 gauge here, which is the all American classic and the Joe Biden gun. Uh, all you need is a 12 gauge and you just go off the back porch and you fire a shot in the air and that'll scare the intruders away. Yeah, try doing that in the middle of fucking Washington, D.C., Joe. You'll probably have yeah. the service shoot you. But you gotta, you gotta make sure you're groping the girl in front of you. That's what's actually gonna scare the intruder away more than the gun. And by the way, you know, I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn that 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 turn uh, uh um blonde in the sun yeah yeah let me hold it like joe biden <laughs> yeah that's how joe Bo that's how joe biden holds guns he just sniffs them and the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair Come back up again. They look at it. So I learned about roaches. He sniffs them and gropes them. Creepy Joe. Creepy Joe Biden. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. But, um, yeah, this is, a, this is also a Rock Island Armory 12-gauge, also made in the Philippines. Um, it's got a tubular magazine. Basically, you pull it back. That's the classic all-American pump action. Like, if you hear that in the, at 3 a.m., if you broke into somebody's house, you know you've gone too far. Um, but this is this 12-gauge. It shoots two and three-quarter or three-inch 12-gauge slugs, like the one that I showed you earlier, double-up buck. And also, great self-defense weapon. This one right here is based off of the classic trench World War I shotguns, which I'd love to own a genuine trench shotgun, don't get me wrong. This is a nickel-plated marine coat shotgun. Um, it's corrosion resistant with the nickel plating on it. But this gun right here with the 20-inch barrel, its primary goal is for self-defense. It's a self-defense shotgun. And, but it could also be used for hunting, too. I mean, you know, 12 gauges, one of the most classic firearm, hunting firearms out there. By the way... Um... I just I just want to point out, I want to kind of um, brandish a, um, a weapon of my own right quick, um, something I got on eBay and what the mainstream considers is one of the most dangerous and deadly and violent uh, 
weapons actually um, out there that anyone can purchase. And uh, that is my, my ceramic uh, 4chan honkler pin right here because uh, honkler is apparently just so dangerous and banned. And, and anywhere honkler shows up, there's going to be like genocide and dead women and children and, and, and cats with heads cut off and dogs limbs scattered all over the road and it's just gonna be like a horror film because you know the mainstream this, is this, the, this is honkler is just so dangerous is so, um yeah this honkler is just so dangerous and terrifying and and should be banned because it's so terrible and and hateful and just this honkler pin is just gonna cost so many lives it's so deadly so that that's the mainstream's uh perspective so this is my assault weapon here that i that i got on on ebay and uh, anybody can get, <gasps> look up the look up the 4chan um, so offended i'll die honkler pin that you know you can just you know you're just like you can offend people into having heart attacks and aneurysms it's like you know. use gendered language please do not use gendered language yeah like like you know with like with, with triggering to my anxiety triggering to my anxiety with my head i can like reflect the sun and make it like a laser and like kill people that way but you know this honkler pin is like way more deadly it's just, <laughs> just trust the mainstream this honkler pin is just like like having a weapon of mass destruction it's terrible right have you heard about the latest contrived moral panic? Racist clowns! Remember when 4chan trolled the media into believing that the OK hand sign was secret code for white supremacy? Well, they've done it again. Now sporting an LGBT flag coloured afro and a red nose, Pepe the Frog is back in the form of Honkler. Bear with me. Operation Honk is another 4chan troll to turn Honkler into the next OK hand sign. According to one post, it's all about taking back the rainbow. In other words, 4chan is attempting to troll the media into freaking out about clowns being a dog whistle for bigotry and racism. Who's that? But surely the media wouldn't fall for the same trick a second time, would they? <laughs> Once again, the fringe right and the fringe left serve each other's interests by creating a circular feedback loop. By contriving a phony moral panic over something that's completely absurd and meaningless. <laughs> So groups like Right Wing Watch actually do the bidding of the far right by manifesting the reality the far right desires. Now the OK hand sign is racist, now frogs are racist, and clowns are racist. It's not just edgy banter, Nazis are everywhere, and the only way to stop them is by donating to Right Wing Watch. There's money to be made. This is a non-profit that makes money through donations. So of course, the only way the nonprofit can survive is by convincing you there is something going on, a threat that you need to know about. Have you seen a clown in a globe on Twitter? Perhaps you didn't realize it was actually a white nationalist. You should donate. And as ever with these contrived moral panics, some on the left are taking it deadly seriously. You really thought that you could take a symbol of positivity and turn it in to a racist symbol! Well, you can't, cause he's mine now, bitches! Pepe's mine! He's mine! I have been diagnosed with depression. When there's no room in hell, the clowns shall walk the earth. And by the way, using the term friend to mean friend is also now officially racist. A friend. That's right. A little old friend seeks to make friend world friendly again. Although at its core a joke, the Honkler meme does speak to the wider nihilistic societal malaise shared not just by actual racists that we do live in clown world. 
Drag queens, some of whom later turn out to be pedos, reading stories to kids. Gender fluid sex workers licking airplane toilet seats. Leftists celebrating the gender transitioning of their four year old kids. Virtue signalling progressives applauding themselves for stopping the deportation of a convicted rapist. Squat toilets being introduced to fulfil diversity goals. Massive corporations and left wing media outlets hyperventilating over toxic masculinity and manspreading while telling men to put things up their butts. When the clown world is manifesting itself in reality to such a degree that it might as well be a parody, recognising that we live in a clown world doesn't automatically make you a racist. The idea that this particular meme uh, has anything to do with white supremacy, but more often it's being used to display nihilism to display like generally the idea of a clown world, the idea of we might as well fucking laugh and just do off the wall shit. Who cares? It might just mean that you've put the sunglasses on. It might just be part of your revolt against the modern world. I used to think the future of Western civilization was a tragedy, but now I realize it's a comedy. Or as one post described it, taking the honk pill is a declaration of freedom and an act of philosophical transcendence. It is the simultaneous acknowledgement of the black pill with the decision to avoid its attendant nihilism by consciously choosing to seek joy, to seek adventure, to seek light-hearted and self-amused mastery in the midst of all the chaos. The honk pill is a philosophy unto itself and perhaps in these trying times it's just the medicine this broken world needs. And so what you're seeing is a sort of mimetic creole that's actually begun springing up. Where images are used as stand-ins for words because those words are taboo. Are racists using Pepe clown memes? Yes. Does that mean all clown memes are racist? Only to the extent that all vegetarians are Nazis because Hitler was a vegetarian. <laughs> So if you're on the fringe right and you want the media to freak out about clowns being racist for a laugh, you win. And if you're on the fringe left and you want to create panic and raise money by convincing everyone that clowns are racist, then you win too. And this entire spectacle only serves to illustrate to everyone else that we truly do live in clown world. And of course, here's kind of my, this isn't really a weapon as it is. I mean, it is a weapon in a sense, a classic machete, but you can hack brush with this. You can uh, chop kindling on fire. It's got this serrated edge here. It's like a saw, so you can cut through wood with it, but. Medieval weed whacker. Yeah, it's a medieval weed <laughs> whacker. Essentially, that's what it is. You know, soldiers in Vietnam had these. Like your dad, I imagine, has probably still got his machete. He probably got issued a machete that he used to clear brush with, you know. But, yeah, this is a classic quint quintessential up-close hand-to-hand combat type weapon. You could use it that way. I a mean, few, it's really more of a utility a, tool. A few months ago, I actually saw someone using a machete to hack down a, a, a pine tree. A mm -hmm. few months ago, using it the same way that anyone else would use an axe, just mm -hmm. ha hacking down a pine tree with like a, a stump on it that's like this. Yeah, I wouldn't really recommend that. I would use an axe, but you know, I mean, whatever. Yeah. Floats your boat, I guess. He, he, he looked like a fucking fool. I'm not suggesting people do that, but he was actually. That's like the only <laughs> thing he had. <laughs> yeah. That's that would have been hilarious if, like, yeah, he, had a, he had a freaking machete instead of an axe. But he was working for a company that cuts down trees, so I'd really hope that that's not all he has, because that would be very... It was probably Bruce Reed's tree service. I'd feel bad for him. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah read, 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 tree read, 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 read tree service, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I had a BSEC episode on that. That was funny. Yeah, it was. That, and, and that and that guy went out of business so fast after he became an oh, in, he, yeah, in he, he, he celebrity. It was hilarious. Aww. I was happy to screw him over. 
but anyway, yeah, this is just kind of my, my final, uh, I'm just showing this is just by comparison. This is also considered a weapon. It's a machete. You know, yeah, you could do what the Africans did, what the Tutsis did in Africa, where they basically went around and they chopped people to death with machetes, pull them out of their vehicles at checkpoints and would do sort of that sort of thing. Sierra Leone, there was a lot of that going on. But meanwhile, here here is this Gerber USA, this U.S. Gerber-designed machete that I bought at Fred Meyer, you know, three years ago. And, you know... It's just kind of a nice tool to have, you know. It's a good survival tool. You can cut, you can cut brush, you can do all sorts of stuff with it. And you know, yeah, it would be your last resort as a personal defense item. Generally, when you're down to a knife, a bayonet, or a machete, you're out of options. And I would really suggest that you run as opposed to try to make your last stand, because you're most likely not going to survive. But the point is, they're all tools. They can be used for multiple different purposes, whatever those may be, self-defense, recreation, hunting, um, or, you know, for aggressive, hostile actions like they are so often used for. But, you know, taking away a law-abiding citizen's ability to keep and bear arms is not going to solve the problem. It's never going to solve the problem, never has solve the problem and aggressive, aggressive hostile actions like using the wrong pronoun point of privilege i'm a Tourette's victim with bo and an irrational fear of jazz hands bigots we are safe and we are strong until someone forgets to state their pronouns or whispers too loudly then you go cry in the quiet room triggering to my anxiety jesus christ for someone who suffers from sensory overload you sure do shout a lot triggering to my anxiety point of personal privilege yes Please do not use gendered language to, to address everyone. Okay. Oh my god, look, it's not. It can't be. Is it? It is ma'am! And if you're wondering what triggered him... Please do not use gendered language. The sensory overload dude used the word... Guys! Um, guys, uh, first of all, James Jackson, Sacramento, he, him. I just want to... Um, guys, uh, first of all, James Jackson, Sacramento, he, him. I just want to... Guys, please do not use gendered language. It is ma'am! Guys! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we live in an outrage culture, and at the rate, you know, taking away responsible, responsible citizens' ability to defend themselves in this type of culture is just a recipe for disaster. We've seen this generated time and time again. The Rhodesians gave up their guns in Africa. They got slaughtered by the uh, now Zimbabwe dictator Robert Mugabe. Um, we saw the South Africans give up their guns. Now they're getting hacked to death and killed and boiled in bathtubs and all kinds of sorts of nasty things going on there. We saw it happen in uh, Uganda, which used to be the jewel of Africa. Idi Amin came along and killed all the whites and slaughtered everybody. We've seen it in uh, Ethiopia, same sort of thing. And, you know, we've seen it in China. We've seen it in Germany. We've seen it in countless different countries all over the world. And Russia. 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 Yeah, Soviet Russia. Yeah. Very, so, various countries in South America. Yeah, various countries in South and Central America. I mean, you know, we've seen this this game play out over and over and over again. North Korea, I mean, there's just... You don't want to enter that slippery slope going from... <laughs> that wasn't real communism! <laughs> yes, it was, shut up. Carl, we've run out of grain! I told you common ownership wasn't going to work! It's antithetical to human nature! Uh, but we only tried this once. It wouldn't be fair not to give it a second chance. Okay, so the second time was a wash. But did we really get any closer to trying real socialist principles? Best three out of five? Okay, okay, I get it. You're upset. But here's the thing. If we tried it just one more time, I really think it could work. Ah, uh, oh, look at that. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. Are you happy? I said it. Now let's just give this one more try. 
Why are you always pointing the finger at me? It's hard enough constantly being sabotaged by the CIA. The CIA sabotaged our attempt at socialism in Jamestown? You're missing the point! Socialism can work, I promise! Just one more try, okay? Just one more? Come on, what's a couple more dead bodies on the road to utopia? Okay, so it was more than a couple of dead bodies, but I'm telling you, for getting closer, I can feel it! Ah, man, so a bunch of people died again. Ah, who saw that coming? Man, what a mess. Okay, just another. Stop it! How much longer must we continue to participate in this exercise in masochism? You continually promise that things will change and people too ignorant to know better do your bidding until a perfectly serviceable society is brought to ruin at the sacrificial altar of your relentless utopianism! Oh, I'm a monster! I'm an animal! I'm the worst thing there is! I'm responsible for all of this misery and suffering and pain and just one more time, okay? Huh. Look at that, it worked that time. I knew it would finally catch on. We just had to keep trying for literally all of the remainder of human history. Oh, come on, it didn't take that long. Five minutes until the heat death of the universe. It was worth it. <laughs> we don't want any don't please don't go into the quiet rooms with like any aggressive sense you mean like the stench of the 90 million victims of communism an aggressive scent an aggressive scent yeah you know what some people well, some people say communism doesn't work it does work it works exactly like the way we've seen if you're a fan of genocide if that's what you want to bring in then communism works an aggressive scent. <laughs> yeah, go play Undertale. It's not a fail if genocide's your goal. <laughs> <laughs> An aggressive scent. On the right side of genocide, on the Vinny Eastwood show. An aggressive scent. <laughs> An aggressive scent. Anyway, that is my physical... Uh, demonstration here but of course you know we need to really be careful because after all the FBI says we're domestic terrorists for having conspiracy theories and an aggressive scent we would oh yeah yeah that's, that's that's right just recently the FBI has has deemed it that um, if you disagree with the mainstream you're a conspiracy theorist and if you're a conspiracy theorist you're automatically a domestic terrorist now, that's just their opinion. It's not like it's been legislated into law or anything, and the FBI can have their opinions like anybody else can have their opinions. But, yeah, they're actually on record saying that. So that just goes to show exactly what direction this country is fucking heading. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we finally reached a point in time in society where conspiracy theories themselves, not only have they been degraded by the government as all being automatically false, because conspiracies can never be true, because you can trust the mainstream media. The media always tells the truth. If the media says it's not real, it's not real, right? Oh, crap. Gar we all know that's utter garbage and lies, and yet here we are. Exclusive. FBI document warns, conspiracy theories are a new domestic terror threat <laughs> absolute nonsense you know in the past they said a lot of things were conspiracies oh the government is not giving people psychedelic drugs to try and control their mind mk ultra is a conspiracy then in later news we found out the shocking truth mk ultra was real the CIA and other groups have done terrible, terrible things to American citizens. Or what about the conspiracy that the rich elite in our government are being lollygaggers? That was a conspiracy. And then they found out that Epstein had a plane called the Lolita Express and a special island where he would take the rich and famous, including Clinton, to diddle the littles. And that was proven true. So many conspiracies were proven true. And now what are they saying? They're saying that conspiracy theories are a terror threat? 
Are you kidding me? So over here, we can see here in the short clip, Seth Rich, murder case, Russia connection. They're calling this a conspiracy. However, there's good evidence to suggest that Seth Rich was a leaker at the DNC. Uh, it's a popular misconception, but a lot of the leak were not hacks. That, that's a total lie. A lot of them were inside links because these servers were not accessible from the outside. Now, how did Seth Rich die? Well, for one, he worked for the DNC. And for two, he was shot two times in the back. Sound familiar? Familiar. In his apartment, nothing was stolen. Hmm, it's big brain time. The FBI, for the first time, has identified fringe conspiracy theories as domestic terror threat, according to a previously unpublicized document obtained by Yahoo News. Yahoo! Oh, they did something right for once. The FBI Intelligence Bulletin from the Bureau's Phoenix Field Office, dated May 30th, 2019, describes conspiracy theory-driven domestic extremists as a growing threat, and notes that is the first such report to do so. It lists a number of arrests, including some of which have, haven't been publicized, related to violent incidents motivated by fringe belief. The document specifically mentions QAnon. <laughs> QAnon is a literal cult that is absolute nonsense and fortune telling. I've seen the techniques myself. I was there when the Q post started. They were bullshit then and they're bullshit now. Again, I'm going to say it over and over and over again. QAnon was and is a LARP. It's a LARP. Okay, a LARP. Started by schizophrenic boomers. I even had someone with schizophrenia contact me claiming to be the creator of Q. Now, I don't know if this person's legitimate. I don't know if it's true. But are you really going to trust this, the schizophrenic posting of Q? The sun will rise in the east. The king shall fall from the sky, but not die. The horse ridden will get backstabbed. Look to Mueller. Never forget Mueller. I literally just made that up. But if you put it in a QAnon post, it would probably make sense to all those boomers. A shadowy network that believes in a deep state conspiracy against President Trump and Pizzagate. The theory that a lollygagger ring, including Clinton associates, was being run out of the basement of Washington, D.C. Pizza restaurant, which didn't actually have a basement. You mentioned Clinton. Hmm? Maybe it wasn't a pizza parlor. Maybe the pizza was just a metaphor. Maybe, just maybe. Someone like Clinton who flew on uh, Jeffrey Epstein's plane 26 times. Um, Epstein who was put in prison for trafficking of minors and diddling minors and uh, having pictures of young minors. Maybe, just maybe, Clinton was in on it. He sure rode the plane that would later be dubbed the Lolita Express. Maybe it's not a conspiracy. Maybe... The conspiracy theorists were right all along. Did you ever think about that? Of course not. Because you're the government. Your job is to lie. What a joke. Remember when the FBI were good guys? And you can't even tell me. The FBI guys, there's nothing wrong with them. No, they were literally caught. I have a video on my channel about the FBI. It's also on BitChute, by the way, and other social media websites. Reminder, you can join my Patreon and subscribe card down below in the description. And I prove, for Hacker 4chan proved that the FBI was posting on 4chan and 8chan encouraging and inciting violence. The FBI, they were encouraging violence so that they would have a case and they could get paid more taxpayer money. And I, I'm going to listen to the FBI on their high horse talk to me about what's true and untrue when they were caught posting on 4chan encouraging people to do violent acts. The FBI assesses these conspiracy theories will likely emerge, spread, and evolve in the modern information marketplace, occasionally driving both groups and individual extremists to carry out criminal or violent acts. In some cases, the FBI will spread those conspiracy themselves. The document states, it also goes on to say the FBI believes conspiracy theory-driven extremists are likely to increase during the 2020 presidential election cycle. So the FBI was also caught during the last election saying how they're going to stage a coup to take over the, the election to rig it and make sure that Trump loses. And we're supposed to trust the FBI. Them saying that, oh, conspiracy theories are going to increase in 2020 is just them preemptively trying to cover up the fact that they're probably going to try to do another coup. That is treason. Okay. And w the last time I remember, treason is punishable by death. Whatever happened to that? The FBI said another factor driving the intensity of this threat is the uncovering of real conspiracies or cover-ups involving illegal, harmful, or unconstitutional activities by government officials. In other words, people finding the truth. So as the theory goes, QAnon 
if you were to believe it, it is a LARP. But if you were to believe it, uh, apparently it's, it goes like this. Apparently someone with classified information is seeding that information to all the normies and everyone on 4chan uh, through code, as it were. I believe that's absolutely schizophrenic. So here it says the FBI is under fire for not fighting domestic extremism, citing white people as being the danger. But really, they ignore Antifa, okay? The modern day fascists who attack innocent people, who even attacked a gay Asian journalist, Andy No. But no, they're not, they're not the terror threat. No, 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 blame the straight white males. They're the real villains. Ooh. <laughs> What a world. Ray told lawmakers the FBI had done away with separate categories for black identity, extremists, and white supreme, and said the Bureau was instead now focusing on racially motivated violence. I will say that a majority of domestic terror cases we've investigated are motivated by some version of what you might call white violence. Oh, okay. So what about all the black identity extremists? Hmm? Oh my god. God, what, a, oh my goodness, Let, oh my God, dude, oh, wow, 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 okay. The Bureau now classifies domestic terror threats in a four main category. Racially motivated violent extremism, anti-government slash anti-authority extremism, animal rights slash environmental extremism, and abortion extremism. Live in the upside down. I don't, when, when did everywhere become Australia? A term that the Bureau uses to classify both pro-choice and anti-abortion extremists. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? One group wants babies to not die. The other group wants to do the blood sacrifices for Moloch. Abortions are a for-profit industry that sells body parts. Hail Moloch, am I right? I hear you, my son. Remember to brush your teeth. The new focus on conspiracy theories appears to fall under the broader category of anti-government. Because how dare you challenge a tyrannical, corrupt government? So they're blaming the rise of the internet and social media, aka free speech, and they don't want people to speak about uh, conspiracies. They don't want people to possibly discuss and discover the corruption in the FBI themselves, or the CIA, or the government. No one's allowed to speak anymore. It's very, very interesting, isn't it? You're not allowed to question the official record? What is this, North Korea? Did we stop living in America all of a sudden? Dude, the entire Russian election interfering in the election was a conspiracy theory. It's absolutely bullcrap. So yeah, if you want to hit screen share, we can yeah, pull up that Tim Pool video. I agree with a lot of what Tim Pool said, and of course I, I disagree with, you know, with other parts. We can go ahead and um, get into that. Okay, so Tim Pool... He's right about most things most of the time, and he's been leaning more and more centrist and liberal. He used to be a liberal, but um, he's still one of the many people that are trapped in the left-right dichotomy of, oh, the system works, and that, you know, of course, the Democrats have been infiltrated by leftists, which, yeah, they have, but, you know, he's not realizing the bigger picture like uh, so many people don't realize the bigger picture, and... Um, what I have here is also a, a comment I left on the video itself. Um, so, you know, the title is The Second Civil War is Coming into Focus. I said, really, we're in a war of the people versus government slash corporations. You know, pretty much the same thing anymore these days. Like, it's hard to tell where corporations end and, and government begins. They're so, like, tightly woven into each other. Um, anyway, who is in control of corporations and government right now? leftists parentheses not liberals there's a difference and by the way leftist is just a buzzword i mean call them globalist elites call them the illuminati call them banksters call them call them whatever in the fuck you want to reference it to stalin and mao and hitler whatever you want to do it's like all these different words that are like you know same shit different, different fucking words so just want to make that clear anyway do we see more and more draconian laws in police state society? Yes. Do we see corporations on a war against freedom of speech, a war against the people, and an agenda to police them, <clears throat> excuse me, to thought police the masses? Absolutely. Government is not your friend. Corporations are not your friend. And as Tim Pool explains, we're being led through psychological warfare, parentheses, mainstream propaganda, and to divide and conquer to implode the nation. It is working. 
all politicians are criminals, parentheses to include Trump. And that's not hyperbolic. That's factually provable. Trump is just another Wall Street criminal, just like Obama, Hillary, George W. Bush, etc. And we fall for it and eat it up because we're dumb enough. And if it takes this country going full retard in order for people to finally realize that government politicians and corporations have been waging a cold war against us for a very long time, then I guess that's what it will have to take. People don't like looking at any evidence that contradicts their belief systems. That does include Tim Pool. That includes everyone. We've been societally indoctrinated to grab onto our beliefs for emotional security, no matter how intellectual or open-minded or woke a person might be. We're all human. We've all been raised to be like this. It is a hard habit to break. So that that's just the raw truth of that right there. That's just you know that's just telling it what it like what it is and not playing the blame game and just looking at it all objectively. Just hey, this is you know this is our situation. This is what it is. Okay, I'm gonna bring this back and I'm about to I'm about to full screen it. That's picture in picture. I don't want that. Enter full screen. Okay, here we go. Gonna gonna start the video because we're in full screen mode. The second civil war is coming into focus by Tim Pool. We are in a cold civil war. Funny. I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of people who look at the title of this video and say something like Tim's being hyperbolic and and Tim's exaggerating. And I'm actually citing a Princeton professor. Quote. We are in a cold civil war. What we've seen over the past few days may not actually be related to this potential civil war, except for El Paso. We assume that to be, for the most part, accurate. The Dayton shooting, for those that aren't familiar, we had, I'm assuming you are familiar, but we had two shootings, El Paso, which was driven by a weird white identitarian balkanization ideology. The guy talked about splitting up the U.S. into regions based on race or something, but it was a, a white identitarian idea. Now that group, the white identitarian types, I don't think are necessarily dominant players in the, in the culture war. However, it doesn't matter. It fuels the rise of the far left, which is more likely to be embraced by mainstream culture. What we saw in Dayton, Ohio, was a guy who carried out an act which seemingly makes no sense. We don't know his motivation. We do know the guy was very pro-Antifa, very far left, pro-democratic socialists and all these things, but we don't know why he did what he did. I don't, I actually would lean towards right now saying it probably wasn't politically motivated. We just don't know. Simply because he had these ideologies doesn't mean he did it for any reason. The attack was seemingly random. At the same time, even though the guy in El Paso put out a manifesto, he went to a Walmart and shot a bunch of random people. It doesn't seem to make sense either. So I can't tell you why, what, I can tell you that the rhetoric emerging from this is showing us that it doesn't matter who did what or why. What matters is that people are pushing their ideology, their fake news, their interpretation. All of this is resulting in a divide that can never be mended. And when you see two mass shootings where the ideology behind both groups are, are elements of the growing cultural crisis, it starts to look like a civil war is coming into focus. I don't know what a civil war in this era would look like. I have said in the past, don't, ex I hate using the word civil war specifically because people imagine like two groups marching towards each other, fighting over the government. Some kind of conflict is happening. Some kind of civil war, at least according to this Princeton professor. And I said before, what we're going to see is insurgency. And I think that's where we're, we're walking into. I want to make a point before we get into, I, I got a ton of sources that I want to show you that freak me out, but I want to make one important point. I've said it before and I'll say it again. When we look at history, we're looking at bullet points condensed into single pages. When in reality, what led up to World War I and World War II happened over a long period of time. And, and it's probable that when the wars first started, actually, it's a guarantee. When World War II first started, people didn't know it was World War II. They didn't call it World War II. The United States wasn't involved for quite some time until after Pearl Harbor. It's a very complicated situation. So the war is raging in Europe. And what are people in the U.S. saying? Are they saying we are in World War II? No. When we look in the history books, they talk about what the U.S. was doing at the time and how it led to what we now call World War II. 
It's a complicated process. But we could be in the great conflict. And in 50 years, they'll say the whole thing started in 2014 with Gamergate or in 2011 with Occupy Wall Street or in 2008 with the Great Recession. We don't know. We don't know how history will look back upon us. We can't see in front of us. But in 100 years, they may be talking about this great conflict. Now, it's entirely possible nothing happens. I have no idea. But it's starting to seem like the things I've been expecting to happen are happening. People of various ideologies carrying out extremist acts. One seems to be more cut and dry. One I'm not sure of. But when you stand back, regardless of what these people are claiming to do, we, you'll, you will have people just looking at the El Paso guy and blaming Trump. You have, you, have, you have people looking at the Dayton guy and blaming the left for refusing to address mental illness or for scaring this guy and freaking him out with left-wing ideology, of which he posted a ton of. This Princeton professor is targeting Trump. So I want to take a look at this, but before, before we do, I must stress, head over to timcast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There's a PayPal option, a crypto option, a physical address. The important thing here, YouTube has deranked independent political commentary. I, I, I guarantee you this video will not be monetized. I, it can't be. You know, and, it, and, it's, and it's ridiculous considering CNN will cover the same stories. CNN will monetize in the same way, but YouTube won't allow it. And I will stress that I have actually, so I, I've asked you to share my videos if you like them. And I went, I, I tried one day without doing it. And I saw the numbers take a massive hit. So I, I've actually done this back and forth to see like total number, trying to experiment. So I'm greatly appreciative of everybody who does share these videos because it really is solving the problem of YouTube deranking my channel and other channels. Let's get into the news and talk about, uh, uh, here's what I want you to envision. A year ago, I said, I believe we are facing some kind of new civil conflict, some kind of urban crisis, a cultural crisis, whatever you want to call it. And we were seeing street battles and street violence. We're seeing the rhetoric escalate. And I don't know what form it'll take, but I, I, I think it's happening. Now it kind of feels like, to me, we're starting to see the image become clearer and clearer when you have these two incidents in one day with two people who held specific ideologies. I'm not talking about the motive right now. I understand the motive isn't, isn't clear. The one guy, it seems to be, although I don't think they've actually verified the manifesto, they believe it to be, for the most part, accurate. The other guy didn't have it. We don't know his motive yet. The point is, however, people will take it one way or another. That's the issue. Perce- perception, uh, perspective, uh, perception is reality. Let's read this story here about the Cold Civil War, and then I want to move on to the current news. And, and trust me when I say I'm putting these pieces together. Princeton professor Eddie Glaude Jr. responding on Sunday to the shooting deaths of at least 20 people in El Paso, Texas, said the U.S. is in the midst of a Cold Civil War. What happens when we use language like infestation? Glaude said on NBC's Meet the Press. You set the stage for people who are even more on the extreme to act violently. We are in a cold civil war, and there are some people who bear the burden of it. We have children in El Paso right now who just witnessed their friends and family members shot down because someone thinks there's a Hispanic invasion of the country, which is almost the exact same language of the president of the United States, he added. Now, this guy in El Paso was extremely lethal, and that's why fringe right-wing extremism is typically more dangerous and more deserving of government resources. And I've said it a million times. Of course, I'm pretty sure the far left doesn't care because I'm very critical of them. Why? The far left engages in low level violence frequently. They're, vi- they're not very good at it. It's not particularly lethal. Oh, that, you, they do try. You know, they beat the crap out of people. So they get the focus because people won't call them out. This story is a perfect example. Let's, take, let's, let's break down what this guy said. He said, what happens when we use language like infestation? Let me rewind. What happens when we use language like concentration camp? Tim Poole said on his channel, you set the stage for people who are even more on the extreme to act violently. Sounds very similar to what I said a few days ago. We are in a cold civil war and there are some people who bear the burden of it. Let's rewind now. He said, or let's let's go forward to where he says, it's almost the exact same language of the president of the United States. Rewind. Concentration camp is also the exact same language of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And we saw a guy try to firebomb an ICE facility. When that happened, I called it out. Okay, it happens frequently. So I call it the left frequently. When the right stuff happens, I made three videos about what happened in El Paso, specifically about the ideology and the fear of escalation. When the guy in, in, in Tacoma does the same thing, I made a video about that. The issue is the extremists on the right, while it is seemingly increasing in frequency, depending on which source you're using, I can't make a video about it every single day when nothing is happening, but the left engages in a lot of low tier stuff and I'll absolutely call it out. I don't believe this man is wrong. 
I believe there is an issue with the use of language and how it leads people to become more extreme. Absolutely. But the problem is on both sides. We can see people like this guy in El Paso absolutely was listening to the rhetoric of conservative talking points. Conservatives denounce the violence, reject identitarianism. However, 